when we took over, we were at an overdraft of about 1.7 billion. For a province, it was too much. We had uh, unauthorized expenditure of about 2.7 billion. Uh, we had no, we were under no circumstances of cash positivity. Um, we then had to look at uh, how we stabilize the finances. The issues of disclaimers, it was a common norm that time. You know, it was common that uh, in Limpopo you have these municipalities who are, which are getting disclaimers, you'll have these uh, government departments with disclaimers. Like, for example, the Department of Education. For the past 10 years, it has never get, got out of a disclaimer, you know. But uh, this year, it got out of a disclaimer. Uh, this year, we don't have a disclaimer at the provincial government. We have eliminated all the disclaimers. Remember, the disclaimers uh, is actually where people were hiding a lot of shenanigans. Mm. You know? If, I mean, if lack of a better way to use, you know, a lot of uh, under, and, 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 uh, um, should I say, undercover things mm. were, were covered within these disclaimers. Mm. You know, after doing th wrong things, you would just uh, destroy uh, documents, destroy mm. source documents. Then when the Auditor General comes, there are no source documents. Mm. Then you get a disclaimer. Mm. Then you get away with it because no one cannot mm. can be judged on, so, that, on, on, on that kind of thing. So basically, Premier here, you are saying that your predecessor, Kassel Matale, Julius Malema, Lesiba Kwangwa, David Masondo, they bankrupted this province. Well, I don't want to go into uh, finger pointing because remember I was not here. Mm. I was in Ukraine. I wouldn't know who in particular did this. Mm. But what I know is that there are a number of people who were charged. Mm. A number of people who were dismissed from this administration because of that. Mm. Uh, some are still going through litigations mm. because of that. Uh, mm. I don't think uh, some of those people that you are, you, are, you are mentioning, well, went through litigation. Some were exonerated. Some are still going through litigation mm. even now. But I don't, I don't remember Castle Matale going through that. Why, was, why wasn't the former premier charged? And who are those who are currently going through litigation? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know why the former premier was not charged because um, you know, if you are a premier, you are the head of government mm. um, with executive powers, mm. of course, but you delegate some of the responsibilities. And then if somebody called an accounting officer does things there, you know, uh, it does not necessarily implicate the premier mm. himself. It implicates that person. If the premier can be seen to have acted on that person, it's fine. But. Uh, uh, I, I guess because of uh, the executive authority that he had, maybe that's why he was recalled. I don't know. That's that's my my, 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 my suspicion. In your current administration, is, is there no private company like On Point Engineering running a particular department here? <laughs> no. Current, currently, no. We, one other thing that we successfully did when we took over was to build uh, systems and make sure that there are systems which are alive you know? systems which are which which are talking to all uh, operations which, which which makes operational efficiency something that uh, we are living with as a province speaking about corruption and those particular individuals i mentioned your president now of the anc and deputy president Cyril ramaphosa have spoken about a former member of your province here julius malema's return to the anc as the provincial anc how do you feel about this issue julius malema was not just a former member of the province he's the son of this province of course but he was the president national president of the anc youth league so uh, I don't know what informs the president and the deputy president, but probably it's because of uh, the state of organization of the ANC Youth League when Julius Malimo was still there. Um, I don't think Julius is a bad leader. I think you'll agree with me. Julius is not a bad leader. <laughs> and Julius is, is, is amongst uh, the brilliant young people that we have today in the ANC, that we produced in the ANC. 
So maybe it's, that is what informs uh, the, what the deputy president is saying and the president is saying. As the provincial ANC, have you made initiatives to bring him back? Have you, have you spoken to him? Or is there any, has there been any discussions taking place? I remember the ANC from its inception, the main uh, motive for the, for, 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 for the formation of the ANC was to unite the people of South Africa more especially African people in particular. So uh, anybody, if there is any body that we need to organize or need to, to bring into the ANC, we'll do that. We'll definitely do that. So I personally speak to Julius quite often. I speak to many other people who left the ANC quite often. <laughs> Though I may not uh, necessarily disclose what we are talking about, but we are talking about many things. What are you talking about? Many things. Even with Julius? Even with Julius, yes. I, I do talk to Julius many times. About his return? Uh, about his return is something else. <laughs> but about many things. Just to ask you a more direct question, one of your MECs has been implicated in some rather slanderous issues surrounding her own persona, your current MEC of Sports and Recreation, Onika Muloy. Are you going to discipline her in any form since she's bringing... No, why should I? Why should I? I don't, I don't see any reason why I should do that. Why should I? That's a personal thing, uh, something that we, we, we don't have proof. I, I still, uh, I'm still waiting for the MEC to come and uh, explain herself in, in, in as far as that is concerned. But really, I don't think that is something that should uh, occupy my, my mind for now. You know, what I can, I can simply say to her is that she must remain strong because in terms of her line function, she's one of the best MECs that I have. So I don't think that side issues, that private issue, if ever there is substance to it, should actually uh, distract her from, um, or defocus her from her responsibilities because she's doing a very good job. And the current MEC of Health or the former MEC of Health, there are issues around that? Are there, is there anything of corruption there? Corruption? Yes. In, in the Department of Health? Hmm. No, I don't know of the, any corruption there. Okay. I don't know of any corruption. If you know of it, tell me, I'll investigate. So in essence, you are running a perfectly functioning government with minimal corruption and fraud taking place? Minimal corruption, if there is any, yes. I, I would say so, but uh, to say you are running a perfectly functional uh, administration, it's something else. We, we're still striving for that. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, in this four years that I've, I, I've been a premier of this province, two of those years where we did not have executive powers, uh, we had administrators running the province. Basically, we were just sitting ABCs and sitting premiers for in the first two years. Mm. We only had three years to deal, to do all these kind of things that we did, and we did a lot. Stan Chupumatabata, is he coming back as ANC Provincial Chairperson in April? If the branches nominate and vote for me, I'll definitely continue with the good job that I'm doing currently. <laughs> <laughs> well, so let's... <laughs> that was uh, Babu Stanley Chupuma Tabata, the current premier of Limpopo, saying that if the branches of the ANC still believe in him, he'll come back as the provincial chairperson in April. They are going to that all-important conference that will take place in April. They are preparing that for that. And also speaking about the former president of the Youth League, who hails from this province, where the late Pitamukaba, the former president of the Youth League, as well comes from in Sishiko, also talking about issues of corruption plaguing that former administration led by Kassel Matale, saying that he basically inherited a bankrupt province and had to put a lot of measures in place to get them financially stable and functioning properly saying that during his first his term now as, as, as the premier of the province for two years they were placed under administration and they only got the executive powers back in 2015 on the 2nd of February